What's going on you awesome creatives? In today's video, I thought we'd change it up a little bit, jump out of Photoshop and look into some AutoCAD layer management styles. So let's boot up AutoCAD and take a look around. All right guys, so I've got AutoCAD open up here and let's just kind of jump up into here. So I thought I'd take a moment today, jump out of Photoshop and take a look around in AutoCAD because it's another program that I use quite regularly. Um, and obviously as layers and files get bigger and bigger, a good layer management system is really needed and I found this out firsthand recently. So I thought I'd show you guys, um, after a little bit of research, the kind of layer management system I'm using. For those of you guys that don't know, Australia doesn't really have their own specialized one. Um, we've kind of adapted the US version, um, but definitely check out what's available in your region because they do differ region to region. But the most important thing is to kind of have a layer management system that's easily understood and that you keep consistent throughout all your documents. But anyway, let's jump into this and kind of take a look around. So as you can kind of see here, we've got four different sections. Um, not all of these are needed, um, but let's kind of address them. All right, so this first one here in this light blue, this here is our discipline, right? So this kind of comes under whether it be architecture, uh, engineering, like civil works, equipment, fire protection, or whatever else, all right? So for most of us, we're, um, we're architecture students, so this here would be an A, right? So for like civil works, it's W, for landscaping, it's L, for structural systems, it's S, um, interiors is obviously I, so most of them just take their first initial, right? So for us, it would be a simple A. Now, I know we've got two X's here. You can actually, if we kind of bring down this arrow, this here is actually optional, right? So this first X, did we just lose that? No, we did. Let's throw that back up there. So that's our discipline, right? Um, so this first, second X is actually optional. Um, you can use it to kind of... Um, bring more clarity to the kind of discipline if you need to, right? So that's just if you need to define it a little bit more, all right? So next up, we've got our major group, all right? So let's pull this down. Our major group in this instance is only ever four characters, all right? There's no optional characters. You'll always need the four, all right? So this can be whether you have a wall, whether you have a boundary line, a bridge, ceiling, or a grid or whatnot, all right? And each of these kind of come into a a major kind of um, kind of heading, right? So let's just bring up a textbook really quickly. And so these could be buildings, it'd be B L D G, all right. Boundaries might be B N D Y. I'm just going to throw in a couple of the most um, used by me. Or you've got door here, all right. And you've got maybe floor, which is F L O R. All right, and then maybe furniture, which is F-O-R-N, right? Um, and then occasionally I use a grid as well. So that's G-R-I-D, right? So pretty basic stuff there. Oop, let's scale that up. All right, so that's some of the major kind of groups that you can have. Obviously building, boundary, door, floor, furniture, and grid, right? So you can kind of already see, all right? Just to make this kind of easy as well, what we might do is pull this over here and we'll just put A for architecture, I for interiors, you know, uh, W for civil works, which we shouldn't really be dealing with too much. All right, so that's, that's the basics of that. Next up, we've kind of got our minor group. Now these here are optional. And if you're a uni student studying architecture or whatnot, um, you probably don't need to look into your minor groups. However, it is a good habit to get into, right? So these are just help um, redefine your major group even further, all right? So it's up to you guys whether you're going to use them. I'm not going to give you any examples because I don't really use them at the moment. And then the last kind of point here is phase, all right? So this is also optional, all right? So if I kind of throw this up, we've got each of your major groups are optional and so is your phase, right? So those arrows are all your optional ones. Obviously that arrow kind of covers the entire minor group, all right? So for your phase, 
right? This can come into new works, existing works, temporary works, that kind of thing. And if you've got a larger scale, maybe it comes into a, a actual phase kind of regime, whether it be phase one, phase two, phase three, in which case it actually go via a number. Right, so for this, you've probably got new work, so I'd probably end up putting an N in there, or an existing work, which would be E. So say you're doing a renovation on something. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. Just make sure that you kind of keep um, all your layers, all right, depending on what it is, as a separate layer. So you might have these a little bit differently, because I'm on Mac, you might have these um, somewhere else. Your toolbars might be different. Um, but always use a different color for whatever group that you're using. Um, make sure you use your default um, kind of colors. So you use your default um, color and you use your default um, line type as well, right? So by layer. And you can always kind of go into your layer manager, right, by clicking that. And if we kind of create one here, we could have a, you know, capitals, a dash building dash you know whatever if i wanted to continue right and that would do so then we can kind of do that and then we can click this and change our color wherever we wanted to right and then you can also change this as well so that's why you always use your defaults over here and you just change it on your layer management styles right so that's kind of really important and I think that will pretty much wrap us up. So that's all your kind of disciplines, major groups, minor groups, and phases, all right? And that's just a good way and good example of keeping all your AutoCAD layers really, really organized. If this has kind of helped you out here today, then consider subscribing down below, leave a like on the video. And if you've got any questions, um, or maybe you've got a question on, you know, other major groups or minor groups, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Until next time, guys, have an awesome week. And I'll see you guys on the next video.